them that fear the Lord Jesus. He that swear to his own hurt Jesus and change not Jesus. He that that put it not out his money to earth nor take reward against the innocent. And I saw Jesus. He that does these things shall never be moved. Who shall never be moved? Jesus. And I saw Jesus in um in some chapter fifteen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the reading of the word. Amen. Um, I I was wanting to go over here to 2 Corinthians 13 and 1. So like I said, this morning, God gave me, I will establish you. I will establish you. And so if we start on on 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1, it says, This is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And so the first thing uh, this brings me to is agreement. You know, um, he said the mouth of two or three witnesses. There is power in agreement. Uh, Matthew's. 18 and 20 says for where two or three are gathered together in my name there am i in the midst of them amos 3 and 3 says can two walk together except they be agreed how can you be established if you have yet to agree not only with one another but with god So Job 22 and 21 says, Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up and thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophrah Ophrah, uh, as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. The English standard version of uh, verse 21 says, Agree with God and be at peace, whereby good will come to you. Receive instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up if you remove injustice far from your tents. And so basically the the beginning of it being established is um, not only with one another, being on one accord with one another, but also through Christ Jesus, through our Fa- Abba Father. You know, when we agree what what he says when we like he said uh in verse 21 um the english standard version it said agree with god and be at peace thereby good will come to you so it, it then he turned around and said receive instruction from his mouth so a lot of us we don't receive the instruct we don't just not only do we not agree but we don't receive the instructions he gives us and so in order for us to be established we need to be uh be obedient to his instructions we need to agree with god as well as one another we can't walk together as amos 3 3 said unless we agree we got to be on the same page we gotta sometimes things haven't been established because we have yet to come into a power of agreement uh not just with man but with god and so we're gonna go on to second uh corinthians 13 and 2. Mom, is there anything you would like to say in, in, in response to that before we go further? Hello? 
a little bit, Charlie. No, I, no, I have nothing to say. <laughs> okay, okay. So we're gonna go on back to Second Corinthians thirteen, and we're gonna go to verse two. It says, "I I told you before, and foretell you." So we're gonna be kind of bouncing with Second uh, Corinthians thirteen, just the FYI. So kind of keep your finger there if you follow me with your fa- you know, if you follow me with your Bible. Just know that we're going to keep going back to this this uh, particular scripture. So anyways, I told you before and foretell you as if I were present the second time and being absent now, I write them, I write to them, which here too for have sinned and to all others that if I come again, I will not spare since ye seek a proof of of Christ speaking in me which to you word is not weak but is mighty in you so they were seeking proof that Christ was speaking in Paul and it says of four for though he was crucified through weakness yet he liveth now this is powerful to me yet he liveth by the power of God for we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you so we can be established even through our weakness in Christ Jesus 2 Corinthians I'm going to read that that verse one more time in verse 4 it says uh, for though he was crucified through weakness, so Christ was crucified through we- his weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him. So we are weak in Christ Jesus, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. Second Corinthians 2 and 1 says, it is not expedient for me doubt doubtless to glory i will come to visions and revelations of the lord i knew a man in christ above 14 years ago oh let me go on down uh, let's go to five verse five of such a one will i glorify yet of myself i will not glory but in my affirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth me to be, or that he heareth of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, he says, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I made strong then am I strong so he he was basically letting it be known even here that his strength is made perfect even in his weakness you know this is how he came into that knowledge that man I I, I could be weak but when I'm weak he's strong in me and 2 Corinthians going back to uh, 13 verse 5 it says examine yourself and, and that was another thing the Lord was doing with me, y'all, first of all, is that sometimes people have to be rebuilt 
And the reason is because they built themselves up instead of allowing Holy Spirit to come in and build them. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, you can uh, get to a place where you are uh, trying to do things by the book. You know what I mean? And not allow the Holy Spirit to make the necessary changes in your life. And instead, you trying to make it for him. That's his job. He is, you know, he leads us. He guides us into all truth. You know, he's able to uh, change our hearts, you know, change our appetites, the things, our desires. He could do it, but we got to allow him to. And when we come in and we think we can do it, it, it reminds me of, of uh, the children of Israel. You know, when um, God came, he allowed them to come to the mountain and he asked them, were they able to uphold his laws? And they said yes. And so because they said yes, they came into agreement and they tried to do it on their own. And what God was showing us through that, even today, is that we can't do it without him. Yeah, you could try, but Jesus even said that you can't come no other way except through him. And so you could try to build things up yourself, but it will get knocked down. Why? Because it wasn't established. It wasn't built on him. It wasn't built on his principles. A lot of times we take on other people's principles, uh, take up on other people's beliefs instead of going after the things of God, what he told you or called you to do. And so we can be established when we come into agreement with Christ. We come, we, we come into agreement with Holy Spirit. We come in agreement with the Father, you know, that his will will be fulfilled in this earth, you know. And so we have to get into that place of agreement. Now, once again, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, it says, examine yourselves. Rather ye be in the faith. Prove your own self. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Except ye be reprobates. So recognize that Christ lives in you. If he's not in you. Then you will be considered a reprobate. But he is. He's in you. He said prove your own self. You trying to prove me, but I need you to prove you. You know, if you just you just uh, remember what we just got through reading in verse uh, four. He was letting it be known that they were coming to try to see. Uh, oh, the, oh, verse three, it said, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. And so you looking for a Christ in me, but you need to prove your own self is what he was telling them. Examine your own self, prove your own self. You know, uh, he says, uh, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Six says, but I trust that ye sh shall know that we are not reprobates. Know that not only are you not a reprobate, but I ain't, even, I ain't one either. He said that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that we should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we cannot do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong. And this also we wish even your perfection. Therefore, I write these things being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. And so notice that Paul recognized that he used this, uh, he, that uh, he should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord gave him to edify and not destruction not to destruct 
And sometimes we use sharpness to destruct and not edify. We ought to be edifying the body of Christ and not using it uh, for destruction, to demolish the, the work that God is trying to do. He's trying to build, he's trying to establish, and there's people that come in to destroy the, the what he's trying to establish. They use wisdom or they use whatever they know to try to bring, they, they, it's like you're, you're, you're on the wrong side. Where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? You know what I mean? Like, uh, trying to, instead of trying to help build, you trying to bring down the bricks that that's being built up. You know, we trying to build something here, not, not destroy it, you know? And so he, he, you have to know that that's our place, you know, is to help build, not to destroy and so he said in verse 11, finally, brother, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. And the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. So I want to go back to uh, verse 11, uh, which is 2 Corinthians 13 and 11. It says, Folly, brother, farewell. Be perfect. How do we become perfect? Uh, let's go to Matthew 6 and 43. And so we're kind of going to break down verse 11. It says, Ye have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. This is this is establishing um, God's precepts. We, uh, this is to help us be established in Christ Jesus. So he's, he, he's kind of going back to, to what we've been taught. And he said, ye have heard that it had been said that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Verse 44 says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And we've heard this backwards. Nobody said, look, pray for them that's cursing you. You know, nobody said, do good to them that hate you. Did they tell us, you know, uh, pray for them that despitefully use you. There's people that come to use you. And instead of you taking it and, and getting a heart to heart, we ought to be praying for the ones that's trying to use us because God sees it, you know, and we know our heavenly father don't play about his children. And it says in 45 says that ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. So we're doing this as a, uh, basically because uh, we know that Abba, this is the way he worked. And so we ought to be uh, a reflection of what he does. And this is how he does things. You know, uh, and he says in 45, that ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So we can be per in a perfect place with Christ because we're doing the same thing that he does. He, he rated on the just as well as the unjust. He sends, he sends the sun to rise on the evil as well as on the good. So you got to bless those on both sides is what I'm here. For if you love only them, for if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? What reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Don't even the publicans do the same thing? Don't they love the ones that love them? So what difference are you? What difference are you making just loving those that love you? And if you if ye salute your brethren only. What do you, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do so? So if you speaking to 
only your brother only the ones that you affiliate yourself with only your family only the ones that's in christ jesus what more are you doing don't even the publicans do this don't even the people in the world do this be ye therefore perfect this is where that come from be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect how because not only is he blessing those that he knows the blessing those that uh knows him blessing the the just and the un I mean, the just only but he's also blessing the unjust he's even bl blessing the ones that are evil just as well as he is the ones that are good so we have to be replicates of him uh second corinthians 13 11 says be of good comfort that's another that's uh after uh being perfect he said be of good comfort uh, St. John 14 and 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13 11 also says, Be of one mind. And Philippians 2 and 1 says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves so we ought to you know come with the the mind of humility low of my lowliness of mind is a is a, a mind of a humbleness being a humble you know, and, and, and esteeming each other better than ourselves, not just trying to get uh, others to uh, esteem us or just esteem ourselves, but also that we would esteem one another. It says, let this mind be in you, which it was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He said, let this mind be in you. The same mind that's in Christ Jesus be in you. And this is the mind that was in Christ Jesus. He, he being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And it says, but made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, which was made the, in the likeness of men. He didn't come as a king. He came in a form as a servant. He came to serve us. And we ought to also do the same in serving one another. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. This is this is the Christ. This is Christ Jesus came and he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So he came he came so humble that he was obedient. He was obedient until death. Second Corinthians, going back to verse 11 again, it says, live in peace. And so we go to Philippians 4 and 7. It says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians uh, 13 and 11 once again says, And the love and the, and the God 
of love. And uh, if as we read in Jeremiah 30, uh, 31 and 3, it says, The Lord have a, appeared of old unto thee, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. And so just as that same love that God gives us, we ought to give one another. Second Corinthians 11 also talks about, once again, the peace. He said, live in peace in the one. The other, he says, and peace shall be with you. Matthew 10 and 13 says, and if that, if the peace, I mean, if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. So that peace ought to already be with you. And you ought to be able to get the peace. And then if the peace ain't worth, if the house ain't worthy, then the peace should automatically come with you. Although peace is already going to be with you as you go out and do the work of the Lord. Um. We're going to go on now to Second Chronicles. Uh, Mom, is there anything you would like to say before we go on? No. Okay. So we're going on to Second Chronicles 20 and 15. Hello, Deborah. Welcome. God bless you, woman of God. We're uh, talking about establishment and we're over here now in second chronicles 20 and 15 you're welcome to join us if you would like god bless you it says uh and he said hearken ye all judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem and thou king jehoshaphat thus saith the lord unto you be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's tomorrow go ye down against them behold they come up by the clip of Ziz and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerusalem ye shall not need to fight in this battle set yourselves stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord worshiping the Lord so he bowed his head in humility before the Lord and everyone else fell uh, before the Lord worshiping the Lord my God because of what they were told that the Lord was going to be with them and they didn't need to fight in this battle 19 says and the Levites of the children of the Korites, Korites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. and as they went forth Jehoshaphat stood and said hear me O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prof prosper. So he told us, not only, first of all, my God, sometimes there's battles that's going on around you and you don't have to fight it. But we have to go to God. And ask him, Father, what are you, what about this? What about this that's going on? You know, he may just tell you, take a seat, be still, wait on me. I'm going to take care of that. You don't have to fight this battle. You can have a seat. Let me, let me handle that. 
you know, it, but also we have to get in a place of faith where we believe God, we believe his word, we believe, you know, what he said, we believe his prophets, and he says, so shall ye prosper, so you could also be established, he could establish you, uh, once he gets a hold of what you're believing, your beliefs can cause you to be established, you know, by what you're believing. Are you believing a lie? Are you believing the truth? Are you believing the word of God? What he spoke to you directly? Or are you believing what somebody else said that, that you know, didn't even hear the voice of God? You know, it's a lie. Are you believing the truth? Are you believing a lie? The one that came from the enemy. You know, sometimes we can get caught up like that, believing the wrong things and that, and therefore that could, you know, uh, hinder our, us being established in Christ Jesus. And so, uh, it says, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And when they began to see and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. So as they began to praise, my God. Even our praise can cause us to be established. Things can start happening. This, here came an ambush. How? Because the people believed and they began to praise. You know, instead of panicking. And although the word of God went forth, they and, and not taking hold on the word, what he said, that he was going to establish them. You know, instead... Uh, if they they would have went the uh, went left, they would have just said, "Okay, yeah, I heard what he said." But see, there's all this, all these different uh, people that are coming against us. What 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 would we do? You know, they could have went in panic and still not listen to what the word of God said. That you ain't gonna need a fight. But when they began to praise and they believed God, His word, what He said, not only that, but he, they believed the prophets. My God. And, and they began to be obedient to what was what was spoken. And they began to praise. And they began to sing. And an ambush came. Because they it's like entering into a place, a place of faith. And in that place, we can be established. For the children of the Ammonites and Moabs, we're going on to verse 23, stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. So all of a sudden, <laughs> the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. So there was confusion going on. They start coming against the ones that they were supposed to be helping. Listen, and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. So they went from one to another, destroying each other. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days a gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Why? Because they ended up destroying one another. So here's all this spoil. All this, you know, everything that they had is still left there for them 
they were blessed in the midst of this because of their obedience, because they believed God, because they didn't panic. They began to worship and do as the Lord called them to do. And here comes the ambush. You know, here they go fighting against one another to utterly destroy one another. And here they are in celebration, collecting the spoil because they believed. And therefore, they were established based off of belief. Some of us just are, aren't believing God. We're not believing his word. We're not uh, coming into agreement like we were talking about with what he said. We're not being obedient to the word of God, what he told us to do in order for us to become established. 26 verse 26 says and on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Bertrand Bertrand I'm sorry y'all I can't really say that name for for there they blessed the Lord therefore the name of the place the same place was called the valley of Bertrand unto this day then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies and they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trump trumpets unto the house of the Lord and the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel so the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest round about so look he didn't even have to fight anymore why he he was able to enter into rest because of the obedience because they found out oh my goodness their God fought against those that came against him them so yeah they're not going to be a part of that because here their god stood up and fought for them uh and jehoshaphat reigned over judah he was 30 and five years old when he began to reign and he reigned 20 and five years in jerusalem and his mother name was azabah the son the daughter of shish Shil Shil it and he walked in the way of Asa his father and departed not from it doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord and so going to Job we're going to go to Job 22 verse 23 it says and thou return to the almighty thou shalt be built up thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles then shalt thy thou lay up gold as dust and the brook the and the gold of Ephraim as the stones of the brooks yea the almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver for then shalt thou have thy delight in the almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways when men are cast down then shall I say there is lifting up and he shall save the humble person he shall deliver the island of the innocent and it is delivered by the pureness of thine hands so God truly wants to be uh, us to be established but he said in order for us to become established there are conditions that must first be established. And so, just like you said, thou shalt, there's a place, you know, once we, uh, once the conditions are established where you can decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. Things will happen 
because you pl you gotten into a place where now you know whatever you say is coming to pass rather it be your belief system whether it be you know i'm gonna say uh rather it be it's your heart so we're gonna go into the heart posture um Psalms 51 and 10 says, Create and be a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So there's a, that's a condition where we need God to purify our heart, change the way we feel about certain things or even certain people. 11 says, Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. How? By our heart posture, there's a change that has that has to take place sometimes in your heart. It could be the condition of your mind that has to be changed. As Philippians two and five said, "Let there let this mind be in you, which was also Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant." And was made in the likeness of men, and being being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Are we humble? Are we obedient to the death of the cross? Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father it could be due to the conditions of our ways of thinking. You know, our thinking could be an issue. Second Corinthians 10 and 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience it comes right back to obedience of christ so we got to cast all those things down all those strongholds those things that was fighting against us trying to pull us down trying to try not to allow us to get to those places that the, that the father has for us even in our ways of thinking we got to cast down every every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Whatever he said, whatever he said about us, whatever he's trying to tell us to do. You know, we might look at it like, it's too big, God, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? And so we got to cast that thing down. Yeah, it was a thought. Oh, man, we got to shut those ways of thinking down. Oh, or it could be our brother. What they what we think about them. Oh, they don't measure up. They, they don't. Ain't no way they could do that. That don't even make sense. But how are they going to do this and they ain't got no money? How are they going to, you know, it's, it's so many ways that we think that's not right. And we have to learn how to cast those things, those negative things down and bring it into the captivity. Bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. If it's going against being obedient, then we know it's not of God. Cast it down. If he told you to do something, he gave you the ability to do it. You are well more than capable. It may not seem like it. Your, your situation may not seem like it is, but that don't necessarily mean that you aren't. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We got to be reminded. What did he say to us about us? You know, when it comes down to finances, he may have you do something big. You might do a mega conference with, in, a, in a stadium. And you like, I'm trying to book this thing. I'm trying to get this thing together, but I don't got no stadium money. <laughs> like, how am I do this, Lord? 
and, and you know, you start looking at you, well, you're not in obedience because he didn't tell you to do. He said, be obedient to what his word said, which is go forth and do what he tell you to do. But at the same time, know that God have already made provision. All you have to do is walk in faith and do it. And having in readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So be ready to revenge all disobedience with your obedience. Just start doing what God told you to do. Doing what God calls you to do. Cast down every imagination, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience. We got to be obedient. Having in a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. He said in verse 7, do you look on things after the outer outward appearance? What are you looking at? Are you looking at the outside? Are you looking at what God just told you to do? Are you looking to God? Are you looking to him, the author of the Christ? Are we looking to the author and finisher of our faith? He began the good work. He's going to finish it. Are we looking to him to, to finish? Are we looking to him to establish? Who are we looking at? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. So just like you, so are we. Some people look at they the only one. And he said, hold up. What are you looking at here? Are you looking at yourself to be this? Well, guess what? We are too. We are one body. Um, he may have to change the condition of your appetite. Five, uh, Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger. I'm talking your appetite. What are you hungering for? What do you want? What are your desires? Who hunger and thirst after righteousness? For they shall be filled. Are you going after the righteousness of Christ Jesus? Are you going after self-righteousness? You know, those that hunger and thirst. We got to hunger and thirst after Christ. After the things of Christ. After his righteousness. Uh, the conditions of your faith it could be that that's holding you back from being established. Matthew 9 and 27 says, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of man, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Have we gotten to the place that we can say, Yea, Lord, I believe. And our, even if we're not there, can we say, Help me by unbelief? Because we know that we, we know who to go to for our help. Our help cometh from him. You know, our help cometh from the Lord. Then, touched he their eyes when he said yeah lord then he touched their eyes saying according to your faith be it unto you so after they came into agreement that he's able to do this he was able to touch them had we gotten to a place where we are agreed with what thus said the lord so that he's able to establish us. He's able to touch those areas of our life into which we lack. Have we come into that place? Have you have you gotten to the place where we know that it's through him? We live, we move, we have our being. In him we can be established. He can use your financial struggles. As an area to establish you. Why? How? Because these can be looking so dry. You know, they knew when uh when it, when they when he touched their eyes, before he touched their eyes, that only he could do it. Sometimes our finances look so bad 
And we know that uh, the only person that can straighten it out is him. You see what it look like, Lord? I need you to establish me financially, you know? And we come into that agreement because we don't see no other way. You know, it's sometimes we have to get to that place. I don't see another way, Father. It, it, it takes him to establish us. It takes us to come into agreement that, yes, he can do it. I believe. And if we don't, help my unbelief. But it also places you in a place of humility. That's that higher posture once again. We have to be humble. As James 4 and 5 says, Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusts to envy, but he giveth more grace? Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself. In the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. Sometimes we got to come into a place of humility in order to be established. Sometimes the conditions have nothing to do with you. You could be humble. You could be loving. You could be walking in the love of God. You could be agreeing with him. You could be obedient to him. But it all comes down to his timing. As it, as it says in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, to everything there is a season and a time, to every purpose under the, the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep. And a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he, lay, wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to, to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in the, in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to, to do good in his life. And also every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Uh, it is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God does, he, it, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doth it, that men should fear before him that which have been is now, and that which is to be hath already been and God requireth that which is past and moreover I saw this un, I, I saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there I said in my heart God shall judge the righteous and the wicked for there is a time there is uh there for every purpose and 
for every work. I'm going to say that again. Verse 17. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. No matter if it's righteous or wicked. Just as he said uh, in verse 16. He said, moreover, I saw under the sun, the place of judgment, that wickedness was there. In a place of judgment, wickedness was in the place of judgment. And the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Wickedness was also in a place of it, of, uh, of righteousness. I'm, it, I'm sorry, iniquity was still in a place of righteousness. And then that's what Kate brought him to a place where he saw in his heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. They reminds me of all things working together for our good in order for us to be established. Everything has to work together. Everything comes together for for a time and for his purpose you know uh for and in any ways in Gen Genesis 18 and 6 and this is my last scripture it says and Abraham hastened to the tent unto Sarah and said make ready quickly there measures of fine meal need it and bake cakes upon the hearth and Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a, a young man and he hastened to dress it and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. God bless you. Uh, man of God, King, you are welcome to join us if you would like. Um... Uh, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I a certainty bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed? I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And so she's looking at her situation. She's looking at her age. She's looking at the circumstances, circumstances the situation that she's in. Like, I'm, I'm too old to be having a baby. Are you serious right now, Lord? For real? Me, who's stricken in age, well, I've had the pleasure of being pregnant. Are you for real? You know, so not knowing that, you know, it, it was according to his timing, according to the time of life, Sarah was going to be able to have a son. So their faith had to come to a, an agreement that, okay, it's according to his timing, not mine. You know, and some of us, we, we learn early and others don't learn until we are old. Um, I remember seeing this article about this woman and uh, she was married to this man for years. And this woman was an elderly woman and uh, her and her husband never had children. They wanted children, but they never had any. Um, but... I, I believe she, the woman died or something to that. It's either she died or she was having this pain, something happened. And 
and they found out that the woman was pregnant all the years. There was a baby in her womb. There was a baby in her womb, but it didn't, you know, she didn't actually give life to the baby, but the baby was present. It was there. And I believe that sometimes we have something embedded in the inside of us. There's a place where God wants to establish us, you know, in our lives. It is there. We're carrying it with us, but we still have yet to give birth to it. Why? Because our faith had yet to get there to that place. You know, it could be his time, but because of the conditions of our heart isn't ready or because our faith had yet to be increased. You know, it could be any of those things that we have yet to come to a place of agreement that, okay, Lord, you said that I was going to be, that I was going to give forth, uh, and, and get pregnant and I was going to have this son. So I agree with you. You know, and so therefore I'm going to have this child be according to the time of life. Just as you said, the according to the time in which you ordained is going to happen. But if we don't get into that, step into that place, uh, how will we be established? You know, there's some, these are hindrances that could come along and cause us not to give birth to those things which God has for us to be established in them. You know, we may be looking at the small things, but God is looking at the bigger picture. Are we coming into agreement with God? Are we coming into agreement with his word? Are we coming into agreement with his ways so we can be established in him and not in ourselves? You know, that's the question. And so, uh, mom, if there's anything you would like to add or if there's anything you would like to say in reference to what we were talking about, you're more than welcome. God bless you, woman of God. Alexis Bell, you are welcome to join us if you would like. God bless you. Um, I'm handing the mic over to you, Ma. Brother Charlene, would you like to say anything? Hello, Alexis. God bless you. God bless you too. <laughs> no, I have nothing to say. I just enjoyed it all. I enjoyed um, everything that you said. So, um, yeah, I have nothing to say. You don't have anything to add? Is there anything, any part where, you know, what it well, what had you learned from it? Um, like your title said, um, God will establish you and the things that's in our lives that's holding us back, um, disobedience, uh, are we doing God's will? Are we doing our own will? You know, and uh, <coughs> it just uh, make you do, you know, let us know that we are righteous through Christ Jesus. It's nothing that we've done that calls us to be righteous but it's everything that he has done in us amen <laughs> amen um like i i was i was just i want to kind of go over just a little bit the fact that you know we have to come into a place of agreement not only with one another but also with Christ Jesus about we have to come into agreement with what he said you know the word that he has spoken just as you know we just read about Jehoshaphat you know and how um, when they came into agreement and they uh, believed the word of God we, they believed the prophets you know, and therefore they were established accordingly. They ended up walking away with all that spoil because they came into a place of agreement with what, and they believed God. And that a lot of a lot of us have yet to be established because we have we haven't placed we haven't gotten to a place of agreement yet. 
You know, have we actually gotten into a place where we actually believe God and we believe his actual word, what he said, not only about us, but maybe even what he said about our situation. Like he said, in that situation, you don't have to fight this battle. I'm going to fight for you. And had the people not believed God, can you imagine what could have happened? Had they not stepped into a place of agreement? You know, they would, instead of them running away with this spoil, you know, having all these goods and celebrating, they could have played, got, got into a place where they got defeated. Because they had three different groups of, of tribes coming against them. They could have all, you know, fell them by the wayside. But because they believed God, God brought confusion in the camps. And before you knew it, as they were celebrating, these people was fighting and killing each other. That shows how powerful coming into a place of agreement is. Agreeing with God. As we started at the at the beginning, you know, uh, in uh, first, I mean, second Corinthians thirteen and one, this is the third time I'm come I'm coming to you, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. It'll be established, among, you know, like you said, if we came into an agreement with two people gathered together in his name he's in the midst of us wherefore the words that we speak can be established because we came into a place of agreement we can't walk together except to except we be agreed we have to be in a place of agreement it's important to agree not only with uh what god is saying through one another but that we uh, agree with what God is saying to us even personally and walk accordingly, you know, walk in agreement and walk in obedience. Agreement and obedience work hand in hand. We have to not only agree with the word of God, but we have to obey him. We can't just say, okay, I agree, Lord, but we have to actually walk it out. You know what I'm saying? We can't just, okay, Lord, yeah, I heard what you said. No, we got to walk this thing. We got to actually do what he told us to do. Um, yes. I love that. Uh, the other scripture, I'm going to say, is when it, um, we I read the English Standard Version of Job uh, 22 and 21. It said, agree with God. And be at peace, thereby good will come to you. So there's things that will come to us when we step into a place of agreement. When we actually begin to agree with what God says, you know. And so anyways. Well, I just want to say again, you know, just like you, um, I thank God for you. I thank God how... You have come on agreement with the Lord, and you do what God told you to do. And in spite of it all, you walk it in obedience. And so I believe God smiles upon that, you know. And like you said, where two or three are gathered together, the Lord, he's in the mess. And I believe God is in the mess. You know, and I like the, uh, what you said also, you know, God, I believe, but God, I want to believe, but help my unbelief. And that's in trusting God, you know, and, and that's important that we learn to trust God. And if you don't know how that the Holy Spirit is there to teach us and that help us to trust God and how you put the light on the word also in the book of Matthews. I liked that where you said you brought, you're supposed to love your enemies, you know, and and and, and pray for those that spice for those you should. And so yeah, that you know, that word just stood out and thank God for you know for his word. Amen. I wanted to highlight this one as well once again. Um, that second Corinthians 13 and 11 where he's talked about finally brethren fa farewell be perfect be of good comfort be of one mind live in peace and the God of love 
and peace shall be with you you know and so once we get into that that place where we where we talked about perfect that place of perfection we talked about um comfort the comforter we talked about being of one mind we talked about living in peace and we talked about god's love that love that surpasses all understanding and then that his peace shall be with us and so we get we are able even to walk in his peace as he establishes us you know and and some of these things have to be on one accord in order for us to walk in all these things you know in order for us to be truly established and so um anyways if do you have anything else to say man of god king would you like to say anything okay and so mom you're done Yeah. We're yes, gonna, okay, we're going to go ahead and pray out. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, Lord God, that you are establishing us, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. That we could come into an agreement with you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. Not only that, as we come in agreement with you, that we can become in one agreement with one another, Lord God, that we'll be placed and put in the same page and uh, and recognize that we are one body, Lord God, that we don't fight against one another, that we don't persecute one another, that we don't knock each other down trying to get to the top of Father, that we'll build each other up, hallelujah, in our most holy faith, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we'll continue to even um, help one another esteem one another in the mighty name of jesus lord god instead of trying to tear one another down trying to you know use those those bricks and um and stone uh each other with our words lord god lord instead let us build each other up in the faith lord god by our words words of encouragement words of enlightenment words of love lord god in the mighty name of jesus god and i thank you father that you are the one who is able to do all things you are able lord god to do anything every in everything but fail father we thank you lord god for your love towards us we thank you lord god for your peace that surpasseth all understanding lord god we thank you lord god hallelujah for you establishing us lord god even according to your time god it may not happen when we want it to happen but father we thank you lord god that you are in control of time and at the right time hallelujah all things hallelujah oh blessed be the name of the lord shall be established unto us in the mighty name of jesus god and we trust your word and we believe lord god what you said about us we believe father what you said in your word and that is according to our faith being unto us lord god increase in us in the area of faith increase lord god our belief in you in the mighty name of jesus lord god if there's anything in our hearts, Lord God, that is not like you, I ask, Father, that you will create in us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within us in the mighty name of Jesus. Change our mind, Lord God. Hallelujah. Give us the mind of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that we won't be carried away with our own lust, our own temptations, our own desires, but God, that we'll, we'll desire the things of you, that you change our appetites. Hallelujah that our appetites will be a pleasing unto you in the mighty name of Jesus that will hunger and thirst after your righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus and not self-righteousness hallelujah not anything that's not of you father but everything that has had to do with you in the mighty name of Jesus that will seek your face, oh God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to build us up. Hallelujah. In our most holy faith, help us, Father, to continue to pray in, a, in the spirit. And those that have yet to receive the, the uh, Holy Spirit, Lord God, I pray. 
I pray, Lord God, the gifts of tongues, Lord God, that you will um, allow them, Lord God, to, to receive that gift in the mighty name of Jesus, like only you can in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for your love towards us. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for your peace. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God, I thank you, Lord God, for your love and kindness oh god for through your love and kindness father you drove us god i thank you lord god that you established us even based off of the love oh god that you place on the inside of us god i thank you lord god that you can establish us oh god according to your son that by your daughter the a say even in the no holds out of the a oh blah he did the asha that i buy your daughter the a oh god according to our faith be it unto us god i thank you lord hallelujah in the mighty name of jesus father for everything that you're about to do and everything lord god that you are doing even on the inside of us thank you for making the proper changes hallelujah in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord god hallelujah hallelujah for taking out everything lord god that ought not be In Jesus' name, Lord God, hallelujah. Thank you, oh God, for changing our mindset, the way we think, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, hallelujah, that you will help us, oh God, to bring everything that that every thought, every imagination into captivity, hallelujah, into your obedience, God, hallelujah, that we'll be able to obey you and what you say, even about us and what you say about what we should do in Jesus' mighty name. And God will forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all belongs to you, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you will send your ministering angels, hallelujah, to each and every person that was on this live and everybody that will come and listen to the replay, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that your ministering angels, Lord God, will speak to the minds of your people. Speak, oh God, enlightenment to the ears of your people lord god and allow even free hallelujah ah either the shot out of there oh free the minds of your people as they hear your word in the mighty name of jesus that'll bring forth a cleansing oh god a renewal hallelujah even in the mind god hallelujah that'll bring forth hope hallelujah peace and understanding in the mighty name of Jesus and God will forever give you the praise the honor and the glory for it all belongs to you in Jesus mighty name thank God and amen amen if there's not anything else uh, we're going to go ahead and close the room God bless you thank you so much for joining until next time God bless Well, we use to heard the Bible study. We're now uh, doing Bible study every two weeks at 915 West Madison Street in Kokomo, Indiana. If you're in the Indiana region, you're welcome to join us. Um, primarily, it's women who come together for Bible studies. Also, um, you can join us um, on um, Clubhouse we're also there at 6 30 eastern standard time and 5 30 central hallelujah in jesus mighty name you're welcome to join us there as well um howsoever you can also join us via this um uh podcast 
So God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us with God's House of Prayer. We were talking about establishment. And I just pray that it um, helped someone and enlightened someone to be established through Christ Jesus. Um, God bless you. Until next time.